I have redone my Patreon tiers. For $1 per month, you get priority on requested video topics, a fancy role in my Discord server, and access to a Patreon-only chat. For $5, you get all of that, plus early access to spare room episodes, and your name listed at the end of my videos for one month. For $10, you get everything already listed, plus a PDF copy of my ebook, 365 Days of Character Development, and an exclusive sticker fulfilled by Patreon. Once we see how this goes, I may be adding more merch in the future, so check all of it out in the link down below. We all want to be hot, so let's make that true for our blood-sucking vampires. Spare Room with Karen Terry Hey y'all, and welcome to Spare Room. I'm Karen Terry, and today we're going to talk about vampires. Specifically, we're going to get into seven of my favorite vampire tropes that you can use for your scary, sexy vampire characters. I prefer my vampire characters long-lived instead of immortal. Being immortal comes with all sorts of other things that I don't really find super interesting, because at the core of it, we're all being motivated by a desire to not die. So I want my vampires to be motivated in that same way. And while I'm okay with this being done through lifestyle, for example, living the life of a vampire is dangerous, therefore vampires might get killed, I prefer it to be that vampires just live longer than people, kind of like fantasy elves or dwarves do in a lot of settings. It's all about perspective. So while a life of thousands of years might seem immortal to us, there is still an ending, whereas we're thinking about it in terms of just chunks of like 80 or 100 years, so that seems short to us. For example, I don't think we feel less mortal than a dog feels, even though we live a lot longer than a dog lives. So I prefer long-lived vampires, not immortal vampires. <laughs> So the assumption here is that a vampire's long lifespan or immortality gives them access to the amount of time it would take to become rich in our society. But what's really fun to think about is how a blood-sucking creature has a lot in common with the billionaires of our world. Sure, it's plausible to get to millions of dollars without exploiting people, but it's not possible to get to billions without exploiting anyone. You get to billions by owning the means of production and then using that to exploit other people and gain wealth off of their work. I mean, y'all don't think Jeff Bezos does anything productive, do you? He doesn't. He just sucks his employees' blood. Since vampires are living corpses, there's a trope that they are cold to the touch. Yes, I know this makes no scientific sense, because even if they're ectothermic like reptiles are or like fish are, then they're just going to be room temperature to the touch, not cold. But this isn't about science, it's about tropes I like and tropes I think are fun. But this clearly separates vampires from living creatures. It makes them mysterious or shocking when you first encounter them. And that's what I love so much about this trope. Alright, let's get sexy now. This is the trope we are all here for when it comes to vampires. I know it, you know it, all role players know it. We're not going to write a vampire character without some good old hemoeroticism. When it comes to vampires drinking blood, it's pleasurable for both the drinky and the drinker. Maybe it's consensual, maybe it's violent, but it is always erotic. And there's so much you can play with here. This trope opens you up to having vampire groupies that seek out vampires so that they can be drank from. Or say you have vampire characters that don't want to be human blood drinkers, but they're compelled to because it feels so damn good. And if you have a ship with a vampire character, there's now this whole other layer of intimacy with blood sharing. And that's really the point when it comes to roleplay. We're all here for the indulgence. Isn't it fun to wear whatever you want, even if it makes no sense in the setting? Well. Frozen Fashion Sense is here to satisfy that urge. Maybe their fashion sense is inspired, or maybe it's silly, but whatever the case, this vampire is going around in the same garb that they used to wear when they were human, making it clear they don't belong. Hey, if nothing else, it's eye-catching. And as a role player, this is a research rabbit hole that is so fun to fall down. You can learn so much information about other eras by looking at the fashion sense of that time. 
Okay, maybe you're one of the few people that's not here for the bloodlust, but that means you're here for the angst, and this trope has it in spades. Isn't it just the best when you bestow upon your progeny the gift of undeath, and then they come after you as if you cursed them? Perish the thought, but it happens. The hatred may come immediately, or it may come when the two vampires are reunited centuries later, but either way, the progeny just can't control themselves, and they've got to do a little bit of patricide. Passion and violence can get all mixed up in this trope, making for a healthy dose of angst, brooding, and cruelty. This trope applies to a lot of fictional species and races, but it gets applied to vampires a lot. Usually it's a predator tactic. It's much easier to lure in unsuspecting humans when you're pretty. And this is super easy to pull off in writing because you don't actually have to show the visuals of them being beautiful. You can just say, this vampire is gorgeous. Why exactly does becoming undead make someone beautiful? Who knows? Who cares? We all want to be hot, so let's make that true for our blood-sucking vampires. I mean, if someone's going to drain all the blood from my body, they might as well be bangable, right? So those are my seven favorite vampire tropes that you can use for your vampire characters. Did I include one of your favorites? Am I missing one of your favorites? Let me know down below. And of course, as always, don't forget to make it a great day. Thank you.